My problem is, ha has been with the whole of this chaotic scandal uh, which has engulfed Westminster. But most of this has been a lot of nonsense. I do not consider a mildly flirtatious remark sexual harassment. Sense of proportionality has just deserted the whole thing. People putting in complaints 15 years later that they may have been lightly touched. It is ridiculous. I mean, normally that would just make me laugh. We're already, as a, as a society, at a stage where people are dubious about putting an arm round a distressed child because they feel it might be misinterpreted. Are we really going to get to the stage where no man can make a flirtatious comment, can make a light touch, can give a pat of encouragement, can give a touch of comfort, whatever it might be, where human beings feel they have to stand off from each other? If so, that's not some new age of enlightenment. That's a dark age. Let me ask you this. What... Physical, personal compliment could I pay you that wouldn't offend you? Do you know what? You and me both know the difference between flirting and harassment. And that's the thing. Most yeah, men... But answer my question no, for no, a moment. Because what... In, in other words, if I were to say to you now, yeah. your hair looks lovely, yeah. or you've, I, like, I like what you're wearing, yeah. would you consider that in this new environment to be offensive? I wouldn't. But it doesn't matter about that, because it's not about me as an it, individual. It doesn't matter. I think it does no, matter. No, let me talk... Let me, a let lot me of explain. people are confused now. Yeah. Not a, so let me explain. Not, well, let me just say this. Let me phrase the question correctly. They're not confused about rape or sexual assault mm. or even aggressive... Oh, they are. Well, OK, let, let's just assume... And that's most, part of the problem. Let's assume most people, in my experience, know what rape is and they know what sexual assault mm. is. And but they, know, they don't, and, and that's a huge assumption that you're making and that is part of this same problem. Like, the only point where people take rape seriously is when we have conversations like this and suddenly it's taken really seriously. The conviction rate for rape is 6%, because when we do talk about rape, we still talk about it as something that women have to prevent from happening to themselves. And this is the thing about sexual harassment, that it's not just a touch or a flirt or a text message, it's all of it. We make it acceptable to do the stuff at the other end of the scale why, and all of these right, things affect it. women's confidence I get it. and they all affect women's freedom. Freedom. I get it. But I would also say, from my personal experience talking to women in the last two weeks, a lot of women don't share the view that a hand on a knee, mm. albeit completely inappropriate, mm. perhaps, after a couple of drinks at lunchtime or a clumsy pass by a married politician, mm. they don't see that as anywhere near the same level of offence right. as sexual assault, rape and so on. And so I'm mainly asking, really, you know, I think a lot of people think it's, this is a good debate to be having. Yeah. But where is the line to be drawn? But that's the thing. It's not about... Like, why do we have to draw lines? We know that... Because otherwise people don't know where the line that's, is. But it's and not don't... true. Yeah, like, men is, don't harass... True. Men it don't harass people who can fire them. And that's because very few women are in positions of authority over men. This is actually about power. power and if power. some women don't want to report, that's fine. Nobody's insisting okay. that they should. Yeah. Nobody's let telling us she has to. Well, let me, ask, let me ask Anne. Let me ask, ask Anne Whittakin. Anne, in all your voice. time in Parliament, were you ever sexually harassed? Absolutely not. Uh, and I think for the very obvious reason that, uh, you know, nobody would have expected to make very much progress if they'd tried. But <laughs> honestly, this is not what Westminster is like. I do not recognise the description of a, <clears throat> a toxic atmosphere at Westminster as the one that for 23 years I observed close up. Uh, and I'm really tired of being told, you know, that, that women are being suppressed when it takes them years to report something, when they could report it on the spot time. Some now, of these women on, did report it and it was no, dismissed, so, you had so a it's long simply not just true. Now, now, just hang on. What we're actually getting at the moment is reports coming in via third parties where the women ha don't even want to complain. Do you wonder why, and and when your reaction is like they this? should have done. It is pathetic. It is pathetic. No, it's very courageous when people like you will give them that treatment. Actually, standing up to your harassers and standing up to people like you who belittle people who is it, people's experiences, actually, it's the bravest thing. Of course, this doesn't just apply to women. Uh, you know, we're talking as if women are the only victims. Men also uh, may have grievances which they want to make likely, clean. Women are five times more likely, according to but, ONS. But, oh, Sophie, do let somebody finish, for goodness sake. I'm just, uh, I'm they, just giving <clears> you the facts. Which they want to make known. But what I believe is that there should be proportionality. 
That is the word that I've been using ever since this nonsense started. There is proportionality. What is serious should always be taken seriously. What is trivial isn't worth wasting the time on. Okay. And most of this stuff, yeah. what even the women themselves don't want to complain, yeah. is trivial. Congratulations. Work so hard, forgot how to vacation. There I was thinking it was just me that had a problem, but it turns out it's the air conditioning that's sexist. I know. So many women in our office have the exact same problem. Women, you know, do feel the cold more than men, and that the AC in offices is normally regulated more for a male's temperature than a woman's. Um, yeah. Okay, let's say tomorrow night I, I do my usual Halloween party trick and I dress up as, say, Dracula. Am I culturally appropriating Transylvania? Well, no, because Dracula is a well-known, you know, vampire mythological creature. It's from Transylvania. It's it. Dracula's different. Dracula is literally a cartoon. You know, Stop. it's. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is Halloween. Stopped. We're allowed to we're allowed to dress up as vampires. Yeah. And what I'm saying, what I believe in, is culture for creation. So for me, dressing up as someone like Moana is very different to dressing up as Dracula on Halloween. Explain why. Basically, so Moana is based on Polynesian cultures in the South Pacific. Um, these are cultures that face oppression and discrimination today. They've had their lands taken away from them, and today there is still racial prejudice and discrimination against these people. And so to dress up in their, you know, their native dress and use it as a costume, that's just mockery. It's offensive and it's, it's disrespectful. You're a very intelligent lady. I've read your, your, your articles for many years, but I worry that I, I think this is certifiably insane. I genuinely think, and it would be funny if yeah. it wasn't so dangerous. Polynesians. OK, maybe some Polynesians in the past have had a rough time, or maybe they're having it now. Native Indians, black people, white people in Britain probably had a pretty rough time with the Viking. My daughter is white. If she dresses up as Elsa, she's dressing up as a character from a film that she really likes. She's 10 now, she'd think that was really uncool. If she dressed up as Moana, which she wasn't planning to do, but she will be now, <laughs> um, that wouldn't be, it wouldn't be her mocking or, or, or in any way um, uh, being uh, disrespectful to Polynesian culture. That would be her dressing up as a brilliant, strong female role model. My daughter doesn't see colour because she's not being raised to see colour. Most children don't see colour and, and you're telling them they should. No, I'm saying they need to be aware. Like, I, I wish we could live in an idealistic world where colour and race wasn't an issue. That would be wonderful, but we don't. It is important that at some point children become aware of people this. People are confused by, by the two arguments being presented right. as twin arguments. On the one hand, the little girls can't dress up as a Polynesian because that's racist. On the other hand, they can't dress up as somebody of their own ethnicity, a, a, a white princess, because that's superior. That's so, it. to me, I'm, I'm going to say I, that's kind of where I draw the line. I don't agree so much with um, the writer on this point. Appropriation implies in some way theft, as if in some way dressing up as a character from a film is in any way stealing someone's culture or disrespecting it. It's not stealing it. it is that's what appropriation it. means. It's exactly. It's, oh. If anything, it's celebrating that culture. But Julia, like, you know, you're not from those cultures, and so... Oh, 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 I'm, oh, I'm oh I've, made, oh, I've made the terrible error no. of being white, therefore I'm not allowed to look in. It's just that's about being rule, now, isn't it? and trying to put yourself in the people's shoes and thinking, how but would you, do you feel? Do you, think, you've got do you think the people of Polynesia and have been horrified by that film? I'm sure it's completely different for different people, but at the end of the day, what is it about? It's about the The Polynesian Islanders give a flying fig about that Disney film. I bet they don't. I have read articles saying that... Scotty has joined us now. Hi, Scotty. Thanks for coming in. Just give us your verdict, in essence, here. Is male superiority, is it confined to an anachronistic corner of our gender, or is it hardwired into the male brain? I think it's, I think it's much darker than that. I think it's much sinister than that. I think men in this country, and we'll have to, let's talk about this country, men are socialised to be a hegemonic version of masculinity. So they're, they're told they have to be violent, that they have to be dominate, that they are to be leaders. And we've created cultures that endorse that. And so we're witnessing the effects of that. It's embarrassing, actually, that we've got, mm. like, like, prolific Hollywood film stars who are saying, it's now time that we listen to women. Actually, we need to do more than that. Um, you know, like, it would be really easy, and in their capacity, to be able to sign contracts in which they see the contracts of other women that are playing alongside them and make sure they're being paid the same You don't amount. see any signs of, of attitudes changing. Is, is, it, is it a generational thing to any, any degree at all? 
I think it's far too simplistic. I think my daily experience as a big, fat, queer femme um, of, like, existing in this world is one of violence, of people taking photographs of me in public space, of trucks veering onto the road so people can shout out expletives at me, of having, like, every day having a series of being ridiculed. In fact, actually, I was on the phone to the non-emergency police line reporting a homophobic hate crime whilst another was taking place to me. That is how much I and other people like me have to deal with. You do what you do with your with your arts. Have you got anything else by way of a, a solution or the beginnings of an answer to how to make things better from your point of view? Well, that's, I mean, that's, that's a difficult question because, you know, to some extent, like, I am a, a victim of masculinity in, in a way because of the aggressions that I put up with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, how am, why is it that, uh, like, us, why is it, like, queer, trans, non-binary <clears throat> people, why is it us who's got to come up with the theories to be eloquent enough to be able to say, this is how we disable toxic masculinity? I want, I, actually, this has got to come from within. Men have got to acknowledge their privilege and I want them to hand over power and also I want them to hand over some platform. I'm really up for, like, trying a matriarchy. We've done patriarchy for a long time. Mm. Hasn't really worked. OK, Michael, what do you think? Because obviously I'm, I'm completely too. enlightened. I don't need to be uh, told about well, this. I, I think I've heard a great deal of rubbish in the last few moments. I mean, men are not trained to be dominant and violent. Uh, I was trained to obey a woman who was my leader, who was Margaret Thatcher. And in the present world, we have a female... Always love to do that, We have a they? female queen, we have a female prime minister... A female we have queen, a, a woman who was unelected. We have a female first minister of Scotland, we have a female leader of the Conservative Party in Scotland, we have 21%. a female leader of the Labour Party in Scotland. Uh, I, I just don't recognise the picture you're painting at all. You don't recognise the misogynies that we're, we're currently experiencing in the and, world. I can tell and, you... And, and what is more, if there's one thing that has been remarkable about the last 20 years, it has been the emancipation of uh, gay people. We now have gay marriage. We've had... What? Well, we don't have gay marriage? No, we do have what gay marriage. What do you say? You're not, saying that, you're not saying...